Well, HPV stands for human papillomavirus. Um, this is a virus that is very commonly found in young people, transmitted through genital skin-to-skin -skin contact or through sexual contact. There are many different types of HPV and they can infect various different areas of the body. But in fact, there are about 50 types that almost exclusively just infect the genital area. And of these 50 types, about 15 are so-called oncogenic types. That means they have the potential to cause various different anogenital and in particular cervical cancers. Now, most of this infection is completely silent. In other words, when people are infected with this virus, they don't actually know that they've got it. Some types can cause genital warts. Genital warts are benign lesions. They don't cause cancer at all, but they can be very distressing. HPV is a very common sexually acquired infection. And you find that within the first few years of commencing sexual activity, most people are infected with at least one, if not more, types of HPV. In fact, it's so common that we often refer to it as the common cold of sexual activity. Once young people start becoming sexually active, they very quickly acquire one or more of these HPV types. Now, in the vast majority of cases, our body deals with this virus and we clear the virus from our system. Our body, our immune system learns how to cope with this virus. But very occasionally, with some of these 15 oncogenic, so-called high-risk HPV types, for some reason, we don't clear the virus and the body becomes, uh, the, the virus becomes integrated into the cell and becomes persistent. So it's very exciting when we think about what this new vaccine can do and how it can help to prevent cancer. The vaccine is made of tiny proteins that resemble the outside shell of the real virus. When you're given the vaccine, your body makes antibodies that can then respond if you are exposed to the human papillomavirus and it can help to clear the virus from your body. This is what we call immunity. The vaccine doesn't contain any part of the live virus at all and it is not possible for the vaccine to cause any HPV related illnesses. One thing that people do get a bit concerned about is the safety of a vaccine when it's introduced and if there are any serious side effects. The fact is that there can be side effects from any particular medicines, whether they're vaccines or oral medications that um, are taken. But I think it's important to keep in mind that there were very stringent um, approval processes that this vaccine needed to go through before it was introduced into the Australian market. And it had to be approved by the TGA, which is the Therapeutic Goods Administration, before we were able to make it available for use. There have been um, very uh, extensive clinical trials that have been done. And in the initial trials that were done with this vaccine, um, over 20,000 young women were involved where there was a group of women who were given the vaccine and another group of women who were given the placebo. Nobody knew who was getting the vaccine and who was getting the placebo. And in fact, in follow-up from that trial, there was no difference in the side effects or adverse events in those two different groups. And since we've uh, introduced this vaccine into Australia, it's also important to remember that we have a registry that's been set up so that we can carefully monitor what exactly is going on. And if there's any particular side effect with any individual, then the TGA will follow that through very carefully just to make sure that there's been nothing particular that's been missed in this. But to date, this has been found to be an extremely safe vaccine. One of the questions that parents often ask me is, shouldn't we be waiting a little longer 
shouldn't we be waiting a few more years to see if this vaccine is safe and effective? And I guess my answer to that is, first of all, that we know it is very safe. And indeed, we know also that it's an extremely effective vaccine. So my question would be, why would we want to wait when we know that we've got this extremely safe and highly effective product that we can use? And I think it's important that we make this vaccine available so that we can prevent the unwanted consequences of this viral infection. I guess the point is we'd rather be preventing disease than dealing with the consequences of it. Well, one of the things that we know about HPV is that it's an extremely common infection and that in fact you can catch HPV even after only having sex with one partner. The thing about the vaccine is that it is most effective and really it works if it's given prior to the onset of sexual activity because it's a preventative vaccine. It doesn't treat the virus once it's there. So we really want to give it to a population of young people who have not been infected with HPV. And because we know that once young people start uh, having sexual activity, there's a very, very high chance that they're going to be infected with HPV, then we feel it's much better to give it at a young age when there's a much better chance that they won't have commenced their sexual activity. The other thing too is that we know that the body's immune system in fact works much better to give much higher and more protective um, levels of antibodies to protect us against this virus if we give it in the early teens rather than in the late teens. So it's much more effective to give it at the age of 12 to 13 than it is to be giving it to an older teenager. We can also link very effectively into the school immunisation programs because there are other vaccines that are being given at this age as well. And this means that it's going to be much more convenient for parents to know that their children are going to be vaccinated at school rather than having to make individual appointments. So intimate relationships might be quite a, a number of years away, but I'm sure that everybody wants to feel confident that they've done the best thing in giving a vaccine that can prevent acquisition of this extremely common virus that sometimes can have some quite serious consequences. It's true that in the initial clinical trials that were done, we looked at young women aged 16 to 26, and that was because in these initial clinical trials, we needed to do pap tests on this group of women. And the reason we were doing the pap tests was so that we could monitor to see whether or not there were going to be any abnormalities that developed, if there were going to be any differences between the group that got the vaccine and the group that got the placebo. And of course what we found was that the group that got the vaccine were highly prevented from developing any of these pap test abnormalities. But it wouldn't have been appropriate, of course, to have been doing clinical trials that involved doing pap tests on young girls under the age of 16. However, we did do studies on girls under the age of 16, on these young girls aged 12, around about 12 to 13. And these studies were to look at what sort of immune response we got when they were given the vaccine. And what we actually found was that they, in fact, got a much better immune response than when we gave it to the older teenagers and young women in their 20s. This immune response was actually a higher, um, what we call an antibody response in giving the vaccine. And this is one of the other reasons why we think it's such a good idea to give this vaccine at the relatively young age of 12 to 13. It's true that when any new vaccination is introduced, we're never 100% sure how long the protection is going to last for. But I think it's important to remember that in the clinical trials that involved over 20,000 young women, we've been able to monitor these young women for five and a half years or more. And we've shown in these women that in fact their antibody levels, that means their immune response or their ability to be able to 
protect themselves from infection with HPV has lasted for at least five and a half years. And in fact, there's a subset of those young women who had one of the initial HPV vaccines that only contained one HPV type, where we've shown that their immune response, indicating protection against infection with the virus, has lasted for nine years. And in fact, when the scientists have looked at what's known as mathematical modelling to work out how long the protection for this vaccine might be, it's estimated that it will probably be for at least 15 to 20 years, if not for a lifetime. And what I think is important to remember is that we're going to continue monitoring these women who have had the vaccine. Not only the women who had the vaccine through the clinical trials, but because in Australia we've got an HPV register, we're going to be continually watching and making sure that we can monitor these young women so that if we do find at some point they do need a booster, we'll be able to let them know. It's true that in Australia we've got a fabulous cervical screening program and in fact it's very important that people understand that having the vaccine is not a substitute for having a pap test. What the vaccine does is it prevents you from being infected with certain types of HPV and it has the potential to prevent about 70% of cervical cancer. But in fact, the other 30% of cervical cancer can be caused by other HPV types, and thus it's very important to keep on having um, pap tests done. What the pap test does is the pap test actually looks for infection that's already present, infection that the woman has already acquired. So when you have a pap test done, what we're actually looking for is we're looking for changes in the cells on the cervix that might indicate it that you've had an HPV infection and if this looks like a significant infection then that might need to be treated. But what we're doing with the vaccine is we're getting in a lot earlier. We want to prevent infection to begin with. So in fact giving the vaccine is a fabulous way of preventing infection and preventing these abnormalities from arising. It's not just cervical cancer that we worry about in these cases, but in fact, many women will know how distressing it is to have an abnormal pap test. It causes an immense amount of anxiety, concern and worry. And in fact, then women might have to go off and have further investigations done and have treatment that on their own can cause complications. What we want to do with this vaccine is prevent infection to begin with so that women aren't in the situation where they develop pap test abnormalities. So having the vaccine means that your daughter will be prevented from developing other HPV related illnesses like genital warts and from the majority of pap test abnormalities and cervical cancer. It's really important to remember that having the vaccine is not a substitute for having pap tests and when your daughter's older she will need to remember to have pap tests done on a regular basis. The vaccine prevents certain types of HPV that are responsible for about 70% of cervical cancers. But the other 30% of those cervical cancers are caused by other HPV types that are not in the vaccine. So it's important to talk to your daughter and make sure that she understands that when she's older, she will need to have pap tests done on a regular basis. In Australia, we recommend that young women commence having pap tests between the age of 18 to 20 or two years after commencing sexual activity. So that means if your daughter commences her sexual activity at the age of 21, she needs her first pap test at the age of 23. It's very important that all young women understand how important having regular pap tests still is. What I can say is that in my experience as a clinician, that I found that in fact education and discussion about these sort of issues are a very important part 
of in fact developing safe sexual practices for young people and talking about the vaccine should be just a part of this as we talk about other issues. It's important to remember in fact that in Australia the vast majority of 12 to 13 year olds will have received this vaccine so it can be seen as just a normal part of everyday life. There's no research at all to suggest that young women who are given this vaccine commence sexual activity at an earlier age or indeed have more sexual partners than young women who don't receive this vaccine. So in fact I think that it's important to be confident about giving this vaccine and thinking about it in terms of giving protection for a whole lifetime. You can be confident that you're protecting against the acquisition of a virus that could lead to some serious um, illnesses in the future. Side effects such as allergic reactions to the vaccine are extremely rare and usually occur within 10 minutes of the vaccine being given. If they do occur, it can be in response to an ingredient within the vaccine such as a yeast. But in fact, everyone who has the vaccine is monitored for 15 minutes afterwards so that if by any chance an allergic reaction does occur, this can be managed and treated by the trained nurse or doctor who is present. But I think it's important to put this into perspective as well because for every million doses of the vaccine that are given, only three allergic reactions um, might occur. And this rate is exactly the same as for every other vaccine that is given to children and teenagers around the world. What's important to remember is that this vaccine has been licensed all over the world. Many, many millions of doses of the vaccine have been given and it's been shown to be a very, very safe vaccine. And in Australia, we're going to continue to monitor the safety and efficacy of this vaccine very, very closely. Get as much information as you can about HPV and understand about the vaccine and then you can make a decision together.